A round table with News Channel 5 political analyst Brian Crowley. Brian, thank you for being with us. Appreciate it as always, my friend. The abortion bill now law in Florida, the ban after six weeks. Your thoughts? Well, uh, you know, it's a dramatic turnaround for Florida. Uh, you know, we were 15 weeks not too long ago now. And, uh, you know, Ron DeSantis and the legislature are leading the charge ever since the overturning of Roe v. Way. And uh, we now have some of the most restrictive uh, abortion laws in the country. And Ron DeSantis defends it by simply saying, I got 59% of the vote and I'm doing what Florida voters want me to do. Senator Berman talked about the concerns for women. I'll talk to you about the political part of the equation. Help or hurt Republicans or Democrats, that'll be the big question all the way into and through 2024. Well, you, you know, in the one photograph of his late at night, he had returned from Ohio late at night signing of the bill. There are about two dozen people in that photograph. Nearly all of them are women. So it's not as simple as women. Mm. You know, women are divided on this issue as well. And, uh, you know, men basically have been told to stay out of it. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. so, um, and, you know, again, I, I, I don't know how to argue with what 59 percent of the voters said they wanted in Florida. It's not the success of the Republicans that got this legislation passed alone. It's also the failure of Democrats, who for a couple of decades now have been falling apart as a party in Florida, who allowed the, the party to wind up with a simple minority in the legislature. The Republicans have a supermajority. They can do anything they want. They haven't elected a, 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 a governor since 1994. Lot child. You know, so. I mean, you can point the finger at the Republicans, but you also have to point the finger at Democrats. It's their job to get the job done, and they have failed repeatedly. And, and the, the argument extends to people are able to go vote, and more have voted who support Republican positions than Democrats. We've, we've seen uh, Republicans for the first time in history gain a voter registration edge of almost 600,000 voters after uh, never being ahead like that before. So. Again, the Democrats are the ones who are failing. So you have to kind of look at both sides of this. To Ron DeSantis on another topic, I, I think I heard I was out and about on some other coverage. Somebody said there's, there's, there was a, a trial balloon, a rumor going, maybe he won't run after all. Uh, nip that one in the bud if you're so minded. Uh, well, you, you've heard it. Uh, oh, well, maybe he won't run after all. I, I sure haven't heard that. Nothing indicates he's not full on for a presidential bid. Yeah. Thoughts? Well, one of his supportive uh, PACs is getting ready to, they've already they've bought some commercial time in a couple of primary states, and they're getting ready to re start running those next week. Um, he's He was in Virginia and Ohio <laughs> last week, uh, and a couple of other states, I think. I'm losing track. He's spending more time out of state than in state. He's right running now. hard for a guy not running. So, yeah, I mean, uh, I don't <laughs> see anything that would convince him not to run at this point. Yeah. I, let me uh, go to a Wall Street Journal headline. Donald Trump targets Ron DeSantis, other GOP foes on Social Security and Medicare. He's put the debate over changing those programs. The governor had suggested at one point in Congress, you know, perhaps among other things, the retirement age has moved up uh, to 70. And, and others, uh, Republicans saying we've got to do something. The president, uh, the former president, Donald Trump, going after Ron DeSantis hard. Well, uh, sure, you want to go after Ron DeSantis hard on, on Social Security and Medicare if you can. He did say while he was in Congress that he would favor raising the age and, make, and having other restrictions. In fact, on Friday... Uh, and make Medicare something where you'd, uh, you know, you'd go buy your own coverage, right, sort of a hybrid, right. if not more than that. On Friday, the Trump MAGA pack came out with a brand new ad. Now, there's a story about how Donald Trump, uh, no, I'm sorry, Ron DeSantis is a young, young guy, uh, eight chocolate pudding using his three fingers to take scoop it out. So this ad features somebody scooping out chocolate pudding throughout this 30 second ad and uh, and uh, and and trashing Ron DeSantis on Social Security and Medicare while, of course, sloppily eating chocolate pudding. So it's going to be ugly. Some are arguing that he's not uh, punched back, that he's playing rope-a-dope, needs to start punching back. Some of his supporters argue that. Uh, he's not really punched back and taken the former president on directly. It's what you've talked about, that dynamic of how hard do you take on the former president. Yeah, you know, I was reading something the other day where they were interviewing Trump supporters who were saying, you know, that Ron DeSantis is a really good guy. The asterisk being, if he dares to say anything, this is almost a direct quote, if he dares to say anything negative about Donald Trump, I don't want anything to do with him. 
So DeSantis can't afford to start losing votes this early among the MAGA crowd. So he kind of has to embrace them while at the same time standing back from Donald Trump. The flip side of all that is as Donald Trump is continuing to run ads against Ron DeSantis, mm. continuing to publicly criticize Ron DeSantis, at some point he can't ignore it anymore. So we'll see how he hits back. Final top of mind thoughts before we go to break, Brian. Well, I thought it was very interesting that uh, the Archbishop of uh, Miami Tom uh, Tom, uh, uh, came out last Thursday criticizing Ron DeSantis, saying that uh, he, on with this legislation uh, that would make it a felony to pick up an undocumented person and have them in your car, drive them to a church, drive them to a hospital. That would not be a felony to do that. And uh, he says that the governor lacks empathy. And the governor proclaims himself to be a devout Catholic and, in fact, has an aunt, an aunt who's a nun and an and a uncle who's a priest. But uh, the archbishop thinks he needs to practice his faith a little better. And with that, we'll tee up your closing thoughts when we come right back. Back with Brian and his closing comments in just a moment. 